What happens when someone must give something up in order to protect it? Does his resolve falter? Does he crumble underneath the weight of sacrifice? Or does his spark remain strong, ready to do whatever is necessary? These are questions pertaining to one of the most conflicted but fierce robots. His name is Bumblebee. This is his origin story. What's up you guys, my name is RPG and welcome to my video segment Transformers Movie Universe History. In a previous episode I did a video covering the origins of Jazz. We're close to 20k views on that video so I have to say thanks to all who took time to watch and even rate. That really motivates me to do more. As mentioned in all my other videos that I myself am aware of all the hate the Bay films receive and have to agree that most of it is warranted. But I want to take you guys on a journey and show you some of the positives this universe has to offer because if we're going to be honest, there are certain characters in the films that don't get their just due. Just a heads up, if you haven't seen the movies or read the comic book material used in this video, it will come off a bit spoilerish, so be advised. In today's episode, we'll be uncovering the origins of our cautious but brace little Autobot, Bumblebee. This is a video that I've been getting requests on the most and I've been a little hesitant on if I wanted to drop it due to the major retcons Hasbro has been giving the films. Since them and Paramount have been going on about having their own expanded Transformer cinematic universe, I know it'll inevitably be changed going into Bumblebee's solo film. But hey, what continuity isn't screwed around in the live action movies nowadays? Anyways, I'm excited to talk about our favorite Autobot Scout because the movie seemed to be his hot spot. For the longest time, one could not simply not mention THE Optimus Prime when talking about Transformers. That's essentially still the case when it comes to the popular franchise, but nowadays fans and even casuals sing a different tune when the series is brought up. And that's the fact that you can't talk about Transformers without mentioning Bumblebee. As bad as the Bayverse was, and for the most part still is, it single-handedly changed the infrastructure for not only the character of Bumblebee, but also the way the franchise will be presented going forward. No, I'm not saying that our little bug that could didn't already have a pretty substantial following during his original G1 run. It's obvious that his fan base was strong enough to keep him from being off in the 86 movie, since the corporate heads at Hasbro wanted to wipe out all the original cast just to usher in new toys. But there's just something about live action movies that takes what we already like about our favorite comic book slash cartoon characters and dials them up to 1000. For example, take Iron Man. He was already a pretty cool superhero who garnered a lot of attention, but he wasn't on the level of more known characters like Spider-Man. But due to the overwhelming response he's gotten in the films, he's become one of, if not the most popular superhero, and has become the face of Marvel. This has boosted his comic book sales, and it seems like every iteration can't go without giving a little splash of Robert Downey Jr. to his personality. This lightning in a bottle effect can be said for B. He's gotten so big that his toy sales have gone on to rival that of his Autobot Captain Optimus Prime. The film version of this character just brought a huge gust of fresh air into him and that's pretty much become a part of who he is going into other incarnations. From the now sportier look to the car doors creating the illusion that he has B wings in his robot mode, to the radio communicator voice box. These new additions have transitioned over smoothly into other Transformers lore, most notably the India line continuity like the TF Prime series and onward. Not only that, but the movies for the most part helped secure the name Bumblebee because for the longest times fans hadn't heard anything about him since his G1 run in the show and comics. And that's because Hasbro originally lost the rights to the name, but thanks in part to Paramount, the trademark was re-secured and the rest was history. But anyways, we have a lot to be thankful for with this rendition because a newer version can always take what made this one great and add on something potentially greater. I think that's what makes the TF franchise unique as a whole because each version is able to utilize certain assets from each iteration. One thing that I know for sure is that the movies have done a good job of keeping the mystical appeal between man and machine and his best friend. In my honest opinion, B plays a sort of an avatar for the young viewers and how they react to certain situations if they were a giant ass kicking robot. But anyways, let's stop wasting time and go ahead and jump into the mysterious past of Bumblebee. For my references, I'll be using the IDW movie based comics. This includes the Transformers movie prequel and Defiance issues. I'll also be using the Foundation and Alliance comics to flesh out some of the smaller details. Bumblebee was born over 10,000 years ago, one of the second generation of Cybertronians spawned by the Allspark since its rediscovery and the revitalization of Cybertron. 
The AllSpark was responsible for creating the planet Cybertron and the first entities that inhabited it, a race of massively powerful transdimensional beings that became known as the Dynasty of Primes. As the millennia rolled by, the Transformers would form a new society, and the tales of the Primes and the AllSpark would slip into legend. The cube itself was forgotten, lost beneath the surface of the planet, and without a supply of energy regularly being harvested for it, Cybertron's energy began to diminish, leading to factionalization and tribal warfare against the Transformers. Eventually, one of the Prime's descendants, Sentinel Prime, gathered a small group of loyal followers, including Optimus and Megatron, and together they soared the depths of Cybertron for the cube. The AllSpark was discovered beneath the city of Sinfer and unearthed, prompting an attack by Sentinel's most violent opponents, the Thetacons. During the battle, technical genius Wheeljack used a device to warp space and time, teleporting a sun from across the galaxy into cybertronic space. Rather than sacrifice the sun as the legend's claim was required, Sentinel gambled that mere proximity to the star would be enough for the cube to re-energize itself. And he was correct, the AllSpark was revitalized, and new life flooded in the Cybertron as hostilities came to an end in the face of the truth that Sentinel had been right all along. The Thetacons constructed a temple around the AllSpark as a way of making amends for their aggression. Evidently, the Transformers declined to plumb the depths of the AllSpark's knowledge. It was said to contain the only record history of Cybertron, but to the Transformers, the AllSpark was the source of life, and that was all that mattered. Sometime later, by which point leadership of Cybertron had shifted to an uneasy joint rulership between Optimus and Megatron, the Semper Temple had come to be guarded by Bumblebee and his longtime buddy and lookalike Cliffjumper. So let me get this straight, Cliffjumper. Optimus and the Big Bots would rather dig up something than figure out why the AllSpark is freaking out? They're called energy spikes, Bumblebee. They've happened before, just not with this frequency. Besides, whatever it is they've found, it must be important. Yeah, important. Right. More than this. Bumblebee was troubled by the fact that planetary leaders Optimus and Lord Hypertech and Megatron were more concerned with a nearby archaeological excavation than with the source of these spikes. Cliffjumper tried to get him to calm down when he got anxious from just sitting around. Are you mad that you're not there? Is that what this is all about? Not all of us can fight alongside the others. We're tasked to Optimus's group, and we'll carry out our orders. Do you understand? <sighs> I guess I'm just nervous. Cliffjumper wraps his arm around his comrade and says, What? You don't think you and I can handle anything that comes our way? We're just about ready to join the defense forces if you ask me. But you might be just as poor there. Unless you like patrol duty, nothing much happens. I just say be patient, and let the action come to you. However, Cliffjumper would regret his words, as hostile aliens attack Cybertron, and the pair were quickly pinned down under heavy fire. Let the action come to me, he says. I didn't realize you could see the future, says Bumblebee. I can't. Otherwise, I'd tell you how we were going to get out of this. What about Ironhide? He knows what to do. You can send the Cosmos and I'd be happy. Just get us somebody. Relief finally came in the form of Megatron, who quickly slacked several of the attacking craft. You call yourself Guardians, yet you cower in fear unwilling to take the fight to the enemy. You disgrace your very names. Megatron proceeded to berate the two Autobots. No wonder Optimus- And Wham! He's blasted in the chest by an incoming tank missile. And in a blind rage, he retaliates and rams the alien vessel, tearing it to pieces with his mace. Instructed to stay out of the military's way, Bumblebee was concerned. His ambition ignited by the mysterious relic discovered at the archaeological dig, a power-hungry Megatron sought to have Optimus disposed of and sent a team led by Prowl, including Bumblebee, to apprehend him on charges of treason. Optimus, Optimus, stand down, yells Prowl. You're to be obtained per order from Megatron. As he notices he's outnumbered, Optimus looks up and asks, Detained? For what? For treason. Optimus Prime moves in closer to the lieutenant and asks, How can that be, Prowl? How have I committed treason against my brothers? Tell me. He's back, Optimus, says Bumblebee as he points his blaster at the newly anointed Prime. We're just following orders. You're right, um. Bumblebee, sir. You're right, Bumblebee. My quarrel is not with you. Take me to Megatron, then. What B and the other security officers didn't know, however, was that they were being led into a trap. On the way to the city of Metro Titan, they were ambushed by soldiers loyal to Megatron, who had been ordered to kill them all and save Optimus. Hey Bumblebee, you alright? I'm okay, Smokescreen. What hit us? It was an explosive round, says Optimus Prime. There are a number of energy lines that were damaged in the invasion. This city is unstable and the perfect spot for an ambush. We have to get out of here, now. Bumblebee helped haul RC to safety after the group was hit and the Optimus ordered them all to withdraw to Berthob while he took care of their attackers personally. 
After it was learned that Megatron had rebuilt his defense force as an army known as the Decepticons, Optimus organized Bumblebee and the others loyal to him to stand against Megatron's forces as the Autobots. While on an apparent scouting mission, Bumblebee and RC discovered the Decepticon starship Nemesis while it was under construction. You ever see anything like that, Bumblebee? Asked RC. It's new to me, but I figured you might have guarded it. Nope, never did. I've never seen that before. I'm getting a lot of images of it though. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen on this planet by far. We better tell Prime. I'm glad the new name is sticking. I swear there's gotta be something special about him. Some time later, when the vessel was complete, they also observed that the majority of the Decepticon forces boarded. Returning to the camp at Berthob, they and all the assembled Autobots watched as the Nemesis took off. With the bulk of the Decepticons gone, the Autobots launched their first strike against the former Defense Force, and the war between the two factions truly began. After years of war with no end in sight, How much longer can our planet endure? said Optimus. The war. It's killing Cybertron. I believe I have a solution. My experiments have come to fruition and I have created something that would guarantee an end to this war. Sentinel Prime revealed to Optimus Prime, Ironhide, and Elite One that he had created a golden orb that would decisively win the war. Optimus went through with the idea as Sentinel said it would allow for ending the war without more casualties. The torch required the Allspark to activate it, so Ironhide led an assault on Sinfer Temple. Unfortunately, Starscream blew up Sentinel's ship and Bumblebee retreated with the rest of the Autobots. However, the battle had weakened Decepticon forces to the extent that the Autobots were soon able to steal the Allspark. After moving the relic around the planet, Optimus Prime finally made the desperate decision to launch the Allspark into space to put it beyond Megatron's reach. This decision took Bumblebee by surprise. You wanna do what? Our ship has been ready for some time now. Luckily, the Decepticons never found it, but now is the time we use it. Now is the time we take control of our destiny. Unfortunately, the ship cannot hold us all. Some will have to stay behind. It is because of this situation that I must ask for volunteers. We are the remaining Autobots of Cybertron. We cannot fail. We must win. In three solar cycles, we will make our move. Our final move. Bumblebee was placed in the command of a small Autobot unit at the Allspark's hiding place in Tiger Pax, on the assumption that the Decepticons would focus their attention on Simfer. His mission was to delay Megatron while the others made preparations. None of our lives matter. The Allspark is all, says Optimus. With the Allspark, new life can arise, whether here or elsewhere. Only a trusted few know this, but preparations are underway to send the Allspark into deep space. Better that than allow Lord Megatron to possess it and corrupt it. You must do anything you can to give us the time we need to make this happen. Anything. Remember, as long as there is hope, there is life. Megatron sensed the Allspark's true location, and Bumblebee and his men found themselves under attack by the Decepticon leader and his troops. There's no end to them. They keep coming. We've got to keep pushing forward. Last thing we want is to get pinned down in their entrenchment, says RC. She's right. Let's take the fight to them, or let's maybe fall back to a safer position. Just as B and his unit try to secure a safe spot, they're knocked off guard by a missile. Ugh, everyone's head still attached? Asked Bumblebee. He led the survivors into a building and planned to lead the Decepticons in and sacrifice the remaining Autobots to take out as many Decepticons as possible. Let as many of them follow us in here as possible, and then, when all seems lost, target and take out the roof supports. What? Yells Inferno. You heard me. We have to stall the Decepticons, and if it costs us our lives, so be it. I'm sorry, but we're out of options and out of time. They take out the roof supports and it collapses, but the Decepticons survive. They torch the remaining Autobots to find out the Allspark's location. Swindle begins his interrogation. You, unless you wish to share his fate, tell us where the Allspark is. We know it's here somewhere. Lord Megatron sensed it. The distraction I sent for might fool lesser beings, but not he. <laughs> I've got nothing to say to you traitors. Mm, you'll talk, or your head put on a spike, says a shadowy figure. Megatron, oh no. Swindle nervously mutters. Lord Megatron, we almost had the Allspark's location. We go, leave us. Megatron says as he picks the scout up by his vocal capacitor. We have much to discuss. The Allspark, it calls to me. With or without your help, I will have it. Now, where is the Allspark? I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you if I wanted to. So I'm afraid your threats mean nothing. <laughs> threats? What need do I have for threats? 
Megatron yells as he breaks off B's arm and throws him across the room. Now, talk or die. I've tarried here long enough. The Allspark beckons to me. Sooner or later I'll find it. It's just a matter of time. Before Megatron could do more, he hears the rumbling sound of the Allspark being shot into space. What's happening? What is this? The Allspark! Prime, you amazing fool. Even now you underestimate me. In my interstellar jet mode, I can still reach the Allspark before it enters a wormhole. I shall prevail! Before Megatron can transform into his jet mode and follow, Bumblebee trips him, allowing the Allspark to speed away. Not, not on my watch! You, you have cost me the Allspark. My job is done. The Allspark is finally beyond your reach. For now, perhaps. Rest assured, though, of this small fair victory of yours. No word shall ever be uttered. And Megatron crushes Bumblebee's voice capacitor and transforms to follow the Allspark. Although the young bot survived and was dubbed a hero for his actions, he feared that all the Autobots had done was potentially spread their war to other worlds. In time, the Autobots left Cybertron aboard the Ark in search of the Allspark. After years of questing, in 2003, Bumblebee traced the Allspark to Earth's solar system, first touching down on Mars, where his image was captured by the Hubble Space Telescope and passed the human organization Sector 7. Landing on Earth in the state of Virginia, B quickly evaded Sector 7 by scanning a battered old Camaro and making for St. Louis, Missouri. There, he used a remote link to a coffee shop computer to search Swiggle for any signs of extraterrestrial sightings and discovered the story of Captain Archibald Witwicky, who claimed to have seen an ice man that Bumblebee recognized as a frozen Megatron. Having thus obtained a list of Witwicky's descendants, Bumblebee set course for Springfield, Missouri in search of his son Clarence, evading an attack by Sector 7 along the way. In Springfield, he found records of Clarence's children and started out to track them down, starting with the eldest son, Ben, in Denver, Colorado. Ben proved to be a dead end, so B took off for Tuscan, only to be again attacked by Sector 7, evading their helicopters by blinding them and rocketing off at high speed. Not long after, he learned that the Decepticons had followed him to Earth when he was attacked by Barricade in the desert. Escaping his various pursuers, a damaged and smoking Mumblebee stopped by the roadside on the way out of Colorado to rest and recover. Suddenly, detecting a burst of Allspark energy, he traced the source to New Mexico, where Barricade tracked him down and attacked once again. Other Decepticons, meanwhile, attacked the energy source and found it to be a Sector 7 ruse. Consequently, assuming Bumblebee would have further leads they could exploit, Barricade lets Bumblebee escape so that they could be able to covertly track his movements. Eventually, B's search took him to Tranquility, Nevada, where he would soon encounter Sam with Wiki, whom he befriended and allied with during the subsequent battle for the Allspark. And that, my friends, is where we'll have to end this origin story. If you watched the first movie and onward, you pretty much know how the rest of B's adventure unfolds. I really enjoyed reading about what he was up to during the events on Cybertron. He was an awesome robot who wanted to take action and actually make a difference. This is something that I hope the future films adapt. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm not sure if we'll even get a fraction of what the movie prequel comics have set in stone. Since it's now been revealed that he has this military background and went by the codename ZB7, I'm thinking we could be going into a totally different direction. But hey, this origin was nice while it lasted. I just hope they continue to make the character even more popular and actually show him getting his voice box destroyed in some form or capacity. But anyways, what do you think of Bumblebee's origin story? Do you find it interesting? Does it help you appreciate the expanded universe that the Bay films have presented? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. And if you're interested in more Transformers history videos like this one or just Transformers videos in general, subscribe and hit that notification button to stay updated. I'm open for some more suggestions on the Transformers origin story, so leave a comment. But anyways, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Now it's your